so I'm going into the Torture Museum in Wisconsin Dells. We're going to check it out. All right, what do we got here? We got coffin and contents found in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at a private club in 1974. Ooh, we got the original Shocker. Danger high voltage. Yeah, I'll pass. I don't feel like doing it. <clears throat> Cemetery facade and gates acquired from Paramount Pictures Prop Department, used in over 30 torture and horror movies. Very nice, throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s. He needs a hot dog from next door. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. All in chain. Ah, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yep, that was weird. I was living in Milwaukee at the time, and that was weird. Ooh, there's a spooky guy. The rat torture, of course. Just have rats go around and start eating at you. Mm. Alcatraz C. Escape from Alcatraz. Alright, we're going back. The rack. Ooh. One of history's most famous implements of torture, the rack dates back to ancient Egypt and Babylonia. Many variations of the rack were documented all over Europe, and it became one of the preferred tools of the Inquisition. Victims were tied to the rack and stretched until they were confessed to the crime which they were accused. Applicants were repeated over a period of several days or even months. Reports have been made that bodies have been lengthened up to 12 inches from the systematic dislocation of joints and tearing of muscle. Secured to this dreadful device, the victim also was also helplessly vulnerable to the numerous tools of the Inquisitor. Historic accounts of survivors show that lifelong pain and crippling disfigurement were common side effects of the state-sponsored state uh, cruelty. This is called the Brank. It's also known as the Bride School. It's a head cage designed to discipline and silence women who gossiped, nagged, or spoke too freely. First appearing in Scotland during the 1500s, the brink made its way to England and then to America. The cage would lock around the victim's head and frequently was equipped with a mouthpiece, which sometimes, which was sometimes spiked, that painfully gagged the woman. A chain was then fastened to the cage, and then she was paraded through town. Ancient houses in England had a hook attached to the earth to the hearth, I'm sorry, so that the town jailer could secure the community brink as it silenced one's nagging wife. The rake. That's the rake. That was uh, used primarily in rural areas where the, in the U.S. and Eastern Europe. The rake would be suspended by rope from the highest beam in the barn. The center spike would puncture the victim's torso, causing him or her to pain, writhe in pain, eventually causing death. The victim would be rendered unconscious and then be suspended in midair until the last drop of blood drained from the body. Mutilation shears. That's a piety belt up there. Ooh. It's also known as a self-mortification belt. This device was willing to, willingly worn to seek out pain and discomfort and which would awaken a deeper sense of spirituality. Mutilation shears, designed for shredding flesh and cutting off appendages after bones were crushed. The screw at the end of the, at the end made applying the proper pressure easier. Oof. Mouth opener and tongue terror, reserved for hearsay or blasphemy. The mouth opener was forced to, into the bound victim's mouth to stretch the jaws apart and then the tongue was cut or torn out. Hmm, gibbet cage? This is the gibbet cage or hanging cage. It was not only punishment, but it served as a deterrent as well. After execution, the corpse was hung in the cage for everyone to see while the flesh rotted away. In some cases, live criminals were placed in the gibbet to die of a slow death in view of the townspeople. 
Once people witnessed what happened to criminals, the belief was that they'd avoid committing crimes. A leather whip just wouldn't cut it. In parentheses, the chain scourge with its links flattened and sharpened was the next level in whipping. Ew. I don't know if you can see that with the lighting. Oh, is this the Iron Maiden? There you go, the Iron Maiden of Nuremberg. The Iron Maiden was used as a medieval torture device first used in Germany. It consists of a large human-shaped cabinet with viciously sharp internal spikes. The victim would be placed inside and the door slowly closed so that the spikes impaled him or her, leading to intense discomfort. Hmm. There it is. Still accepted by some today. The scavenger's daughter. Crucifixion spikes right there. They were hammered through the wrists rather than the hands because of the weight of the body would tear through the hand and the body would fall before the victim died. So they had to specially train animals to attack and bite and move the person only slightly when they Torture by electric chair. Mm. Like Broadway producers. There you go. Who are only as good as their last show. These Romans added scenery, burning at the stake, props, and costumes to the beast games. They created plays in which the condemned ah, person got the character, usually from mythology. Put a head in, and you lose it. Same. You might have a criminal being made to look like Orpheus, given a lion to hold, and uh, perhaps surrounded by tame animals, so that if he strummed his life. The interrogation chair strapped naked into this chair. The slightest movement by a victim would cause pain. Torturers would often rock the chair or whip the victim while in the chair to expedite the interrogation. Yeah, I'll pass. Chicago's torturous mobsters and bootleggers. As a powerful political and social force, citizens began protesting the brutality of gladiatorial conduct in 404 while attending a gladiatorial spectacle. Of course, she got the beheading. Nothing like a good beheading. Death in the arena by man. Torture Chicago style. There you go. Pretty much anything you can get your hands on. This is a collection of Billy Club's bats and other persuaders <laughs> seized by Chicago police in 1923 from the Cinderella Club on the southeast side of Chicago. The heretic's fork. One end of the fork would be placed under the chin and the other end into the sternum. Tightening the strap drove the points of the forks into the flesh and forced the head back into an unnatural position. The victim was forced to wear this until he recanted. By recanting, the victim was strangled to death before being burned rather than being buried alive. Dying by the sword. Ouch. Well, the mace. There we go. Originally used in battle to break through a knight's armor, the mace became a handy way to torture for torturers to brutalize their victims. The knee splitter. Although called the knee splitter, any body joint could be placed into this device. As it was tightened, its jaws would crush and cripple whatever lay between its teeth. The bell collar was a multi-purpose device. Not only did the ringing of the bell let warns know there were, where their prisoners were, but the incessant ringing tormented the prisoners. It was difficult to get restful sleep because the bell would ring with the slightest movement. The collars would be chained to make the transportation of prisoners easier. This is some Gacy stuff. Moving bodies from the house. That's the stuff about uh, John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> oh, there's a check, uh, Vincent Price, it looks like. Yeah, check from Vincent Price. Very neat. Right there. And uh, Bella Lugosi signed print. Mm -hmm. 
and there's a John Wayne Gacy painting. High Hole in the Spring, 1988. There's a painting by Richard Speck. Jeffrey Dahmer, the Milwaukee Cannibal. That must be his death, uh, his death uh, certificate. Ed Gein. His death certificate. And Richard Speck's death certificate. Pressure right there. Executioner masks. The Inquisition continued until the 1600s. And uh, clown. Clowns don't scare me. The Iron Gag. Well, I'll tell you what. Pretty interesting. I mean, the uh, Gacy wall was a little more than I was expecting. Oh no, not a bad little attraction here in Wisconsin Dells. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Torture Chamber Museum in Wisconsin Dells. If you did, please like and share. And you can subscribe too by hitting that bell. It'll let you know that uh, my new videos are posted on, on YouTube. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. And from Wisconsin Dells at the Torture Museum, this is Yogi saying, see you next time.